Now, you might recognise my next guest from his roles in General Hospital, Charm, The Bold and the Beautiful and Melrose Place. You're the only woman I'll ever be married to. Oh, my God. Amanda, ah! <laughs> you're mine. Tonight, for the rest of your life, you're mine. Aren't we just one big happy family? What is this? I'm setting up a cable system here in LA. And D&D is in on the ground floor. He was a Calvin Klein model, supermodel, a Hollywood heartthrob and a movie star. But once he came out as a conservative, suddenly the roles dried up. He's in Australia to attend the Supernova Convention. And while he's here, he will launch his book, Sabato, The Untold Story. And he joins me now. You have a fantastic Hollywood career. The, the list you. is long of, of the productions you've been, TV, movies. But tell me what happened when you came out and said, I'm supporting Donald Trump. That was, what, back in 2016? Yeah, that was a while ago. And uh, I guess that's, that's how things work out. You know, when you disagree with certain people and they're in higher power, they, they have an opinion. But... It only made me stronger. I'm much better of a person. I, I just uh, tell the truth. I love to live on, on truth. That's mm. just uh, how my parents raised me. Uh, you know, we came from Italy to the States uh, to be good people, to have dignity and honor. And so uh, I'm a much stronger and tougher person than i ever been, but uh, I want to live on truth, and that's what I did. I spoke my mind. But it must hurt because it was an industry you were just a part of for so long. Um, Mm -hmm. role after role, and then to have that kind of people, you, I guess you considered friends and colleagues, yeah. turn their back on you, it must hurt. Well, not really, because my father was an actor before me. I already knew this was going to happen, you know, in some certain type of degree. But uh, I am right and they were wrong. They yeah. were all wrong all along. So, you know what, I feel good that I sleep good at night. And you know what, if they don't want to hire me based on an opinion, then I don't want to work with them anyway. And at the end of the day, I'm going to work with people that uh, want to hire me for, for my craft. Mm for what I am as an actor and what I can bring to the table. But, you know, we shouldn't be arguing or having really big debates to a point where you're not hired based on political stuff. That shouldn't be like that. No, absolutely. And you see it happening with, with uh, other really successful actors and creators, people yeah. like Tim Allen, Roseanne, yeah. had top-rating sitcoms when sure. they were cancelled. It seems like... Other than Clint, Clint Eastwood, no one's big enough to survive this McCarthyism. If you see, if you, as... my opinion is, if you're a sheep and you follow and you don't say anything, and the more you do that, then they're going to just overcome everything. But the truth always will come out at the end of the day. I'm still working. I have a great film called Grace by Night coming out. It's probably my best project. I've done other. I've done a lot of other stuff in between other type of careers. And I'm going to keep moving forward, and they're not going to stop me, and I'm going to keep being in this business whether they like it or not. But at the end of the day, they should appreciate the fact that this man, myself, stood for something that is right, that he believes. Uh, and I think, I, like I said, at the end of the day, I was right, and they were all wrong. Absolutely. And I think <laughs> audiences are crying out for that as well. They're sick of being preached to by Hollywood, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and they're sick of seeing projects that would be entertaining if they weren't just filled with, political messaging and we're seeing that a lot in films it yeah. seems to be destroying a lot of productions where yeah. they're, they're basically giving the middle finger to at least half the population you're absolutely right because you know entertainment should be about entertaining it shouldn't be about propaganda and about you know changing people's views and you're right because hollywood is putting their their two cents and is becoming the whole market and they should stop right away. But I think, like you said, people are stopping and hopefully they're waking up. They just want to be entertained. Exactly. We have a lot of news going on. You do this every day, right? There's so and, and it's mostly negative. And I think entertainment world was a place where you can make people happy for an hour and a half of the day yeah. where you can just take them away. And that's what I wanted to do it for, you know, and everything else shouldn't matter, you know. And I think if we fight for that, the more we st you stand up for that, I think we'll succeed at the end. Now, not only are the projects highly political, we've got so many actors and artists who are very political. I mean, the <laughs> list is endless, but uh, the likes of, like, Ben Midler, Barbara Streisand, Mark Hamill, you see them tweeting daily all sorts of really sometimes lunatic left stuff, fringe stuff. Non-stop. Non-stop, but, non -stop, mm -hmm. but it never seems to hurt them. The, the media doesn't do hit pieces on them when they're wildly wrong about yeah. things that they've posted. Mm -hmm. it, is this the Hollywood mindset? Does everyone agree with them in Hollywood? Or are there others who think they're idiots, but they're, they're 
yeah. cowed into silence because they've seen what's happened to people like you and You know, in the old days, I respect actors like Brando and Paul Newman. These guys are actually very smart and they actually read something. These, these new people, like, I mean, like all these names you brought up, they're very ignorant on subjects that they shouldn't even talk about. They're very good at making films. They're very good at reading scripts and putting projects together. But I think when you when you become a sheep and you follow another sheep, you don't really take the time to make up your own mind. I think we got to fight. That's what I'm teaching my children: is to be yourself, to follow in, to learn something, to follow your own instinct, your own gut, and to follow the truth. And like I said, at the end of the day, all these people with all these millions of dollars that they're getting in trouble with the law, they're getting in trouble with all these things. At, at the end of the day, they were all wrong. They were all wrong about everything they talked about. And if they want to keep talking that way, that's fine. But I think that the viewership, the new, the new people that are watching all these shows, I think they're a lot smarter. And I believe that in the future, at least I'm being hopeful here, okay? I'm not being, I mean, I'm trying to be hopeful and um, that I think the best is yet to come. I agree with you. I think there's a real awakening, particularly in America, and you see that with the audience numbers even for things like the Academy Awards or the Grammys. Yeah. They're plummeting because people are just yeah. sick of this preachiness and they're demanding something better from from their yeah, art. Class and dignity and honour and to stand up for something is right. And I think out there they're going to look at me and go, you know what, Antonio, at the end of the day, we might disagree with something political, whatever it may be, but you got to respect the fact that people that stand up against everybody else that Absolutely. is following the herd, you got to respect that. And I sleep good at night. I'm good. Yeah, you sleep good. good. And I tell you, um, there are plenty of hypocrites in Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood. yeah. <laughs> do you want to name a couple here? Uh, who do you see as the biggest? Well, right now, we look at it in the news. I mean, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, has just came out saying, you know, I didn't vote for, for, for Biden. Now I'm not going to vote for Biden again, this and that. The fact of the matter, you can look at the facts. In the last three and a half years, America has been the worst it's ever been under a president that doesn't really care about this country. I mean, my country. Mm. But Donald Trump, whether you like him or not, in those four years, we never had any wars. Our dollar was good. Our economy, you know, economy was good for everyone across the board. Our border was... I mean, those are facts. But people don't want to really see those facts because they, like, they hate the man or they hate the neighbor that told them or their friend. And that small mind, that hypocrisy that you're just talking about, it very... So a guy like that who has millions of dollars on the private jets just showed the world that your mind is this small that uh, you need to learn and be a better person. And like I said, Dwayne Johnson is worth a lot more than me in the, in the business, but I beat you because I'm a lot smarter than you because at the end of the day, I was right and you were wrong. So like I said, I might be poor, I might be on the sideline right now, but I'm sleeping good at night that God knows that I'm, I did the right thing. Well, yeah, Dwayne Johnson's copying at the rock from all corners because you're right, he came out, endorsed Biden in 2020. Yep. Now he's saying, well, I'm not going to endorse him. Uh, the conservatives haven't forgotten what he did, but yeah. it's all the lefties who've gone nuts because I have seen him attacked mercilessly Correct. Correct. from his own side yeah. over the last 48 hours. It's been fascinating to yeah. watch. Yeah. Now, tell me about this book. Who have you written it for? Is it for the fans? Is it for the haters? Is no, it for the legacy? What's it's for the fans. It's for people that really want to be motivated because me and my family have been through so much. We lost a home. We came from, to another country. We did it the right way. We followed the law. Those are motivational stories what my mother and my father have been through with me and my sister and the four of us together as a family came to another country, we ran out of money, we went back and all the stories in Hollywood, these are just motivational stories that I wanted to share with all the fans in the world because we need those stories to, to, to just get people out and go, there's, there's hope out there, there's a better way, tomorrow will be a better day, just chill out, don't, because there's so much turmoil in the world. Yeah. You know, and people have gotten rid of God. That they're trying to push everything. All the good things that made us human beings to fight for something. You know, God, Jesus Christ, all these things. They're trying to push. And then what do you got? What do you have? You have Hollywood to lean on, lean on to. And that's not good enough, obviously. So I wanted to give them a story that could, could, could bring some hope to people that are just out and out and need something better. You know, something. There's a better tomorrow. And, 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 and I love seeing people just... Uh, driving to their best because, you know, I, I train hard. I want to be a race car driver. As a matter of fact, any race car teams out there that want to hire a race, car, a race car driver, I'm there. I want to race in America. I want to race in Australia. Those are things that's like, I'm 52 years old. I can just chill out, maybe retire. No, life is good, you know. <laughs> Keep pushing yourself, you know what I mean? Absolutely. It's a fantastic message. Antonia yeah. Sabato, Jr., pleasure to have you on the program. Thank Thanks you. for coming in. My pleasure.